Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and today we're going to take a look at another feature in DaVinci Resolve called Power Windows. Power Windows are a very, very powerful tool for doing masking, different effects, and it's where we start off our tracking. It's, there's a lot of things that we do in Power Windows, and it's one of the things that really separates DaVinci Resolve from other editors. And I think you'll see why when we get into just how powerful Power Windows are. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Okay, let's get into Power Windows. And I've just got two simple clips here that will help us demonstrate a couple things that we can do. And I've shown Power Windows in some other videos, but I haven't done a video dedicated to Power Windows, and I think it's uh, way past time. So let's kind of get going with it. Uh, like I said, I've got these couple clips in here, and I'm gonna go to the color page. And this is where we find our Power Windows. Now, if you have a smaller resolution screen, all these icons might be pushed together here, but we're looking for this one right here. And this is our window palette. And this is where we get to do some different things. So I can create a linear, which is more of a box, a circle, a polygon, a curve, or a gradient. And let's just do something real simple here. And I'm gonna zoom out just a hair so we can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna click on linear. And this is just gonna give me a box. And what I see is my inside of the box and the outside. And this gap is kind of the softness. So I'm just going to kind of position this guy up here. We'll uh, drag this over, bring this down. So what I've done is I've masked out the sky. And look at this node. It shows that I only have the sky selected right there. So this allows us to make adjustments within that window. So now if I come over to my color palette and let's just boost up the saturation. So I'm only affecting the things that are within that window. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and we can see what I'm working with here. So again, I'm just going to, I'm gonna pull my saturation all the way down and pull the saturation up and we see I'm only affecting where that power window was. So that's a very, very powerful tool for doing different types of um, masking to isolate different things. One very interesting aspect of Power Windows is they work hand in hand with the tracker. So if we scrub through this footage here, you can see here at the end, the camera tilts down. So if I don't either keyframe or do something to move this window up, that effect is going to be placed within this ground area. And that's definitely not what I want. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning of this clip. So I've got the power window where I want it, and I'm gonna go over to the tracker, and I'm gonna just select um, start tracking. And you can see it's putting in all these dots in here, so it's tracking the effect. And watch, as the camera tilts down, it's tracking that sky because that's what I had selected there. So even though the camera was moving, I didn't have to do anything to get that mask to animate with the footage. So again, super, super powerful tool right there. Now, if I wanted to kind of do the opposite on the ground here, I've got this node here and I created that mask, I can right click on here and say, add a node, an outside node, and this gives me the opposite of what that previous node was. So where I added all the saturation in here, and let's go ahead and let's boost up the blues in that quite a bit. And now I'm gonna come over to this other one, and I'm going to increase the saturation, but I want it just up the greens. So now, because I have that first node that had the power window on it where we adjusted the blues, the second one it being the opposite, the outside node, I can just adjust the greens. So again, very cool feature in uh, Resolve with the, the power windows, the tracker, and 
outside nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this node and we'll get back into this. Now, let's say I want to add some kind of effect to this. Um, I've got this window here and I want to add like some cool darkening. Maybe it's not going to be cool, but it's, I'm going to show you, right? So I'm going to use the gradient tool. Now this brings up this gradient. So I can grab this, rotate it, and I'm going to stick one of these in one corner and let's do another one and I'll rotate that around there. I'm going to put that one in this corner and try and get them to match a little bit. Now look at this mask, right? I have these gradients coming in from these corners and let's do something like pull down the exposure. So I've got kind of this vignetting going on. And if I want to increase the length of that, I can grab this arrow here and pull it in, make that effect longer. So you can use this for adding color effects, for vignetting like this, to lighten up edges, or if you have vignetting caused from certain lenses or certain filters, you could do this the exact opposite and pull the exposure up on those to get rid of rid of that lens vignetting. So that's another neat way of doing things here with the power windows. And let's go ahead and bring up this other clip here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put in a circle. And we're just going to see how well this is going to work. So I'm going to open this up so I'm surrounding this ex excavate excavator here and let's go to uh, our tracker again and let's try and track this and with any luck look at that it's actually tracking that now let's go and take our offset and we really just want to highlight that excavator. So I pull down the exposure, but that's kind of the opposite of what I wanted. So I'm going to go back to that power window here and it shows me the one down here that is active right now. And then I have these modifiers down here. So if I click the first one, it inverts everything. And now we have this spotlight effect. But you're like, ooh, that doesn't really look that great. So let's take the softness and pull it up. So now we have a spotlight on that, that excavator that really blends in because I was able to increase that softness. But let's look at what that power window looks like. So we'll go to the uh, power window overlay and look at this softness that we've created here. So if I pull this back down, we can see it's basically a uh, a cut out circle like that, uh, just to cut out shape. But as I increase that softness, it really helps to blend it. So I'm going to turn this off so we can kind of see it a little bit better. So that's with the softness all the way down. And we're just going to turn it up until it pretty much blends into the scene. And since that was all tracked, it becomes relatively seamless. So that was just doing it on some random object, but you can absolutely do that for a person, uh, anything like that, that makes it real easy to do things. And let's say, let's take another one here. I'm going to do another node, right? We'll go back to the beginning here and see this logo that we have right here. Let's try and uh, do something interesting with this. Um, I was going to do a circle, but I think a polygon might work better. So, or let's do a curve. That'll probably be even better. So I'm just going to draw around this logo here. Make sure I close it up. And I'm going to go to my blur. Change this to blur. And just blur that guy out. And then let's turn 
uh, it's going to be hard to like make it totally disappear. But now imagine if we were doing some type of documentary and we needed to take out logos, we needed to blur people's faces, we could do all that. And remember, we're still tracking from the previous node. So we have this logo blurred out. And again, let's go to the tracker and we want to track that logo and let's see how well this works. It looks like it's staying in the lines pretty good. Okay, we're going to turn that off. We'll go back to the beginning here. So in those cases where you need to hide logos for documentary purposes, news, um, anything that's not commercial and you need to hide or it's, it is commercial and you want to hide the logos or you for editorial purposes, you want to remove them. This is a way to do it by creating a power window around something, tracking it, and just blurring it out, which is a, a pretty simple way of doing it. Uh, there's other ways we could do things because we can use almost every tool in the book on this power window. But this is just a kind of a quick and easy example of different things we can do. And while we have this on here, I'm going to turn the overlay off. And let's look at some of the other tools we have here. This opacity is at 100%. So I could turn that opacity down if I was doing an effect and basically turn that completely off or bring it back all the way up to really hide that. Just kind of depends on the look we're trying to achieve. So by using the different tools, again, we have a linear, which is a box, a circle, which is pretty obvious, it's a circle, a polygon, which we can kind of stretch in different shapes, a curve where we can actually draw it. And if I click and drag, I get the Bezier curve, which is why this is called a curve. So if I just click, it's going to just give me a point. But if I click and hold, I can pull that into a curve. See that? And so if I know that I want a shaped path, I'll just hold down and drag so I get those Bezier curves in there. So let's get rid of these. I'm going to, uh, let's click on that one, delete it, this one, delete it. We'll click on this one, delete it. Power window. And I'll reset that node grade. So I'm going to try and uh, see how good we can get something like this to track. There we go. Just draw it around here. All right, let's give that one a shot. We'll go over to our tracker and we'll say track that guy. Now, notice I didn't go to the beginning of the scene or the end of the scene. So from here, on, I'm going to do track forward. So I get it from there and I'm going to kind of go back to where I was. And now I'm going to say track backwards. and right off the frame it goes. So now let's kind of pull back into the middle here and we'll just run a quick adjustment on it. We'll just, uh, again, we'll just increase the exposure around it and go back to our power window and let's turn this on so we can see what we're doing again. And now we have our inside softness and outside softness. So depending on how we want this effect to look, once I draw that polygon, unlike putting on a circle or linear or polygon, it doesn't automatically give me the softness controls. I have to actually turn those on by uh, increasing the softness. So once I do that, then I can determine how much or how little softness I want to add just like that.
So just to summarize everything, a power window is a mask where you can add almost any effect that's available to you, coloring, curves, sharpness, blurring, uh, different motion effects, whatever you want to do, you can put into these power windows and they can track objects. Now, sometimes the tracker uh, needs a little help and but we'll get into that in another video. Uh, right now, I wanted to focus on the power window and what it can do. So hopefully this was a good example for you and we'll get you started using power windows. As, as I said, this is one of my favorite tools and it was one of the things that really sold me on using DaVinci Resolve. Well, that was a little look into Power Windows. I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, one of my favorite features of DaVinci Resolve. And it was one of the things that really pushed me away from Premiere and Final Cut Pro because of what all you can do with Power Windows. So thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe if you like these kind of videos. Hit that bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video and like it thumbs down, whichever you prefer. I, I prefer the thumbs up myself, kind of makes me feel a little better inside. Leave your comments below. If you've got questions about things you'd like to see shown in Resolve or Fusion, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure and try and answer it or do a video to help you out with it. This has been Kerry. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.